intertrochanteric hip fractures. It occurs in the region between the greater and the lesser trochanters of the proximal femur. It is approximately 50% of all proximal femur fractures. The neck is about 40%. There are important trabecular pattern at the proximal femur and it occurs according to the Wolf law response of the bone to stress. There is a primary tensile trabecularly and there is a primary compression trabecularly. Also there are secondary tensile and compression trabecularly. In between them there is the world triangle, which is a weak area. The tensile forces can create microfractures or stress fractures at the superior neck in response to the repeated load. There are some important points related to fractures of the proximal femur, especially in the elderly. One is the DVT which can occur in about 80% of patients. Patient will need chemical and mechanical prophylaxis. The duration and the type of the prophylaxis is not determined. There is no unanimity for it. Get the patient out of bed and weight-bearing as tolerated. The patient will auto-regulate their ambulation. Another important point some of the patient may have delay before they come to the hospital. So they might be in the floor for many hours, maybe even days. So check them for DVT, for ulcers, for dehydration, for malnutrition. They can be very sick. Probably you need go medical management with the medical team and you will try to do surgery early within 48 hours because this is associated with decreased one-year mortality. If the patient have ASA 3 and 4, that will increase the mortality, it means they are medically complicated, that will increase the mortality. The whole concept of treatment of hip fractures is you want to control the impaction and collapse of the fracture and you want to restore the alignment. There are three types, stable, unstable, and reverse oblique. Or you can divide them into regular intertrochanteric fracture and reverse oblique. And the regular pattern will be either stable or unstable. Occasionally, the intertrochanteric fracture extends into the subtrochanteric area, and that is usually considered subtrochanteric fracture. So let's take the stable. You will treat that by a sliding hip compression screw. You will insert the screw center center, both in AP and lateral. In the elderly patient, with severe osteoporosis, it's preferred to put the screw inferiorly and posteriorly, definitely not anteriorly and superiorly. The tip apex distance should be less than 25 millimeter, both in the AP and lateral x-rays. When the tip apex distance was greater than 25 millimeter, it led to fixation failure. You can see how we measure that. In a stable fractures, two hole may be better than four hole plate. This compression hip screw should not be used in reverse of like fractures. Always look for the integrity of the lateral femoral cortex. How about the unstable fracture? That is based on loss of the integrity of the posterior medial cortex, which acts as a buttress against fracture collapse. In this case, the ability of the fracture to resist compressive loads 
is gone, is not there. So the fracture could collapse into verse and retroversion. In this case, we prefer to use rod. It will avoid fracture collapse and medial displacement of the fracture. It is a percutaneous technique. Complication of the rod can be fracture at the tip in short rods or perforation of the anterior cortex in long rods due to mismatch between the bow of the femur and the bow of the rod. Also, a screw cut out. How about a sliding compression hip screw and side plate for this type? It's an easy, but it may cause medial displacement of the shaft. If you're going to use it, you got to use it with caution. How about the reverse oblique fracture? It's an unstable fracture pattern. The lateral cortex is not intact. You cannot control the compression with a sliding hip screw. Because of the fracture lateral cortex, it will not support that. Therefore, the fracture will slide. Some people consider it a subtrochanteric fracture. So you can use a rod, blade plate, dynamic condylar screw, or proximal femoral locking plate. Do not use a sliding hip screw. It can lead to major displacement, non-union, and hardware failure. Fracture through the lateral cortex is a predictor free operation if you use the compression hip screw. Lesser trochanter fracture, isolated. If it is avulsion in adolescence, it's probably due to avulsion of the iliopsoas. However, in an old person, rule out pathological metastatic fracture. So what are the complications of intertrochanteric hip fracture? The most important complication is implant failure. It usually occurs in the first three months. The failure is about 60% if the tip apex distance is more than 45 mm, the tip apex distance is important. Also, if you use dynamic compression hip screw in reverse oblique, that probably will fail. What other treatment you give the patient? Check the patient for osteoporosis. You may need to start the patient on calcium and vitamin D and weight-bearing as tolerated because the patient auto-protect or auto-regulate. And it is controversial. Some people like toe touch.